Hi, I'm Jared Gardner, and I'm here today with my dermatopathology, Ed Fulton. And you guys can thank Ed for selecting this nice case to discuss today. Ed always picks the esoteric and difficult things, which is good for me because it makes me continue to learn even in practice. <clears throat> So what we're looking at today is a biopsy from a white shaggy lesion on the border of the tongue. And it would be bilateral and, and white kind of plaques that have these vertical lines and it gives it this kind of shaggy or hairy appearance. So as you may have already noticed uh, from the clinical history that this is the, the typical history of oral hairy leukoplakia, which is what this lesion is we're looking at today. And this is a lesion that's caused by Epstein-Barr virus and it's usually seen in the setting of HIV positive patients, although it can be seen in other types of immunosuppression or immunodeficiency and rarely has been reported in healthy individuals. So what we see from lower power are a couple things. Number one, the uh, surface of the mucosa is made of a thick layer of parakeratin. The nuclei are retained here in the uh, keratin. And it's got kind of a slightly shaggy surface. Now there's also some purple bacterial colonies here. I'll show you a closer look in a minute. And that's probably due to secondary biting or chewing on the lesion. That's a term called morsicaccio um, that you can see on the cheek or the tongue from bite injury over time that gets colonized by bacteria. And that's probably a secondary finding here. But the, the thing to pay attention to is the thick layer of parakeratin and then just beneath it, the keratinocytes of the squamous mucosa, let me turn the light down a little if you can see, they have a pale kind of uh, a pale cytoplasm and they're kind of enlarged. They have what we call ballooning change or um, a vacuolated ballooning cytoplasm. I think that this feature can be sometimes difficult to tell apart from actual normal squamous mucosa in the mouth because squamous mucosa tends to have a glycogenated um, uh, upper portion of the, the upper layers of the squamous mucosa um, tend to have uh, extra glycogen and they look more pale to begin with. So I think sometimes it can be a little bit hard to be sure if something's really ballooning degeneration, but that's what's described in this lesion is the thick layer of parakeratin and then a zone or a band of ballooned pale keratinocytes just beneath that. But the real key to the diagnosis here is going closer and looking at the nuclear features. So remember that I just said that what, what causes oral hairy leukoplakia is Epstein-Barr virus. And if you remember, Epstein-Barr virus is in the human herpes virus family. And so it has some similar viral cytopathic effect changes in the nuclei of the keratinocytes, similar to what you would see in other forms of herpetic infection. The one particular thing that you will notice though about Epstein-Barr virus infection is it makes the, the chromatin push out to the periphery of the nucleus and not just condensed there like you'd see in herpes simplex or uh, varicella zoster, but in fact it makes not just not just a line around the peripheral of the nuclear membrane, but little beads, little condensed clumps of chromatin that show up as these little beaded dots that um, align around the surface, or excuse me, right underneath the nuclear membrane. Let me see if I can get one closer uh, power here to show you. Yeah, beautiful. So this is a really nice example of that effect, this uh, beaded condensation of, okay, sorry, it's really hard to move the slide around at 60x. Okay, this beaded condensed little clumps of chromatin that have a tendency to coalesce around the um, periphery of the nucleus just underneath the nuclear membrane. So that's the characteristic cytologic finding that you'll see. And even on exfoliative cytology, you can see this same uh, type of viral cytopathic effect that helps confirm the diagnosis. And again, it's always important to make sure, like with anything in, in pathology, that it fits with the clinical impression, right? If the patient has shaggy white plaques on the peripheral, on the uh, the bilateral um, uh, lateral edges of the tongue, and the patient has HIV or immunosuppression, then that's good. Outside of that setting, um, probably talk to the oral surgeon or the dentist or the dermatologist to find out um, if the idea of oral hairy leukoplakia fits with their clinical impression. So if in doubt, it's always good to double check and make sure that something fits clinically before making a diagnosis. And uh, again, just really nice example of that beaded condensed chromatin. And as the chromatin gets pushed out to the periphery, it leaves a kind of glassy, 
slightly eosinophilic um, area in the center of the nucleus. And again, that's similar to what you see in other types of herpes virus infections. And that's that cowdery type A um, nuclear inclusion. So you can kind of see it a little bit here, this kind of glassy, homogenous, pale eosinophilic central areas in the nucleus. But I think there's some area on this slide I think that has it even better. Let me see if I can find it. Sometimes it's hard to show these subtle nuclear things on video, but I'll try my best. I think, oh, here, I think here you can kind of see it. It's a little hazy, but you can see that the central, um, the center of the nucleus gets kind of homogenous and eosinophilic. And that's from a mixture of the viral particles blending in together with the leftover DNA uh, in the cell, and it makes that kind of homogenized zone in the center of the nucleus. So those correspond to the, the viral particles and are kind of a form of Cowdery type A uh, nuclear inclusion. So that's oral hairy leukoplakia. And one thing that is important to remember also, the term leukoplakia just means a white plaque-like lesion. It's a clinical term, but oftentimes leukoplakia implies um, underlying squamous dysplasia. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that by definition, but a lot of times in people's minds, I think, it gets equated with leukoplakia, maybe is atypical, maybe dysplastic, maybe premalignant. And I think that that's one problem with the name oral hairy leukoplakia is that it makes you think of other types of leukoplakia that might be dysplastic or pre-malignant. And that's not the case here. There is not cytologic atypia or dysplasia, and this is not a pre-malignant lesion. It's not associated with squamous cell carcinoma development, to my knowledge. So even though the name says leukoplakia, just remember that this is a distinct entity unrelated to other forms of leukoplakia. And also remember that leukoplakia is a clinical term, and by itself it means it's a white plaque-like area on the squamous mucosa in the mouth. It doesn't necessarily mean that there's a pre-malignancy or dysplasia. So um, let's go over to that one area that shows a little bit of that biting or chewing effect, or morsicaccia, which again is a secondary phenomenon here. And you can see that the parakeratosis becomes very ragged and has this kind of frond-like surface. And it's coated with a thick layer of purple. And it's not going to show up real well on the video, unfortunately, because they're so tiny. They kind of uh, blur together on the video screen. Maybe if I turn the light up. But you can see on the microscope that this, this thick um, purple area is composed of numerous tiny cocci bacteria. So these are just layers of colonization of cocci bacteria on this damaged, ragged um, surface. And this is called morsicaccio. And I think, the, if I recall correctly from my oral pathology rotation back in fellowship, morsicaccio bucorum if it's on the inner cheek, morsicaccio linguorum if it's on the tongue. And um, if you find oral pathology hard, you're in good uh, company because I find it challenging too. And I had the privilege of getting to spend a whole month with some really excellent um, oral pathologists, um, uh, Susan Mueller and Steve Budnick and Kelly Maglioka. And they were fantastic people that, that taught me a lot and yet uh, also helped me to realize just how much there is about oral pathology that I still do not know. So thick layer of parakeratosis, underlying band of pale ballooned keratinocytes, peripheral margination of chromatin with these little beaded appearance, and central eosinophilic homogenized nuclear inclusion, oral hairy leukoplakia, Epstein-Barr virus associated, and usually in the setting of HIV. So I hope you found that useful, and uh, thanks for watching this video. Please click like down below and add any comments you, or questions you have. And if you have suggestions for other videos, I'd love to hear them. Please leave them in the comments below. Thanks so much.